Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. I think you're going to really like this lesson. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel for a lot of fun. And art is definitely better with friends. In this lesson, I'll be sharing the benefits of using an alcohol wash with soft pastel. I've had a request for doing another alcohol wash video tutorial. And also, this particular painting uh, had a lot of people really waiting for this tutorial. So it should be a lot of fun. I'm first just using a piece of vine charcoal, also called willow charcoal. I like to get in a really loose and painterly sketch. I'm working on a piece of UART sanded paper. This little sketch part is sped up, but I am going to have a lot of real time in this, especially when I do the alcohol wash. This was actually a preliminary painting for a much larger commission piece I'm doing. I usually like to do a preliminary work before um, committing to a larger uh, painting project. Also, I apologize for not having a reference image here, but I did a lot of this out of imagination. I had some reference images I, I kind of looked at for guidance, but uh, I was working with the client for some concepts. So once again, a lot of it was kind of out of imagination. And now I've just got a piece of, this was a Terry Ludwig, I believe, uh, a nice purple and I'm just getting in some of the values of the tree lines. I talk about the basics of this a lot where vertical things are typically darker in value and horizontal things like grasses, fields are typically lighter in value. Now I'm still using, even though I know the rules of value that things get lighter in the distance, I'm still using this Terry Ludwig pastel because we can get our darks down first and I can add lighter values on top of that tree line. Now I'm going ahead and incorporating this purple as a little um, trail that sort of kind of leads the eye in. All of this pretty much gets covered up, but the value is still there usually showing underneath and kind of pulls the eye in. And at this point I am going to apply some of the alcohol for this alcohol wash. And in this particular painting I did it in stages. You'll see what I mean. So I'm, I'm using my alcohol. This is just regular alcohol you would get at the um, drugstore. I'm using a paper towel and just a brush. I like to try to use a wider brush if possible. I find that it lends more towards a painterly look than using a, a small bristle brush. And I typically put enough alcohol on my brush so that it is uh, pretty wet. I don't want it so wet that it's just totally saturating the paper, but I do kind of like it being a little runny. This application right here was a little bit drier than I like, and now I added a little more alcohol. And you'll see I actually do a stroke um, kind of from beneath. And you see kind of that liquid and how it's even kind of dripping. And I'm fine with that as long as it's just not pouring off the paper or anything. So uh, don't be afraid um, to have a, a bit more alcohol than you might think. And, and don't freak out if it starts to drip or run. You can uh, use that to your favor, as you'll see me do in a minute. And I'm literally, once I get my uh, basic uh, elements in with the alcohol, I actually start using it like paint. I'm, I've got a paintbrush and what happens with pastel when you add alcohol or water is it becomes paint. It's the same uh, medium that's uh, in acrylic paint or oil paint. Uh, all paints are kind of similar except for the binders uh, that hold them together. And so pastels really become like paint when you add liquid to them. So now you can see how I am, I, it's still very wet and I'm adding or reducing the amount of alcohol based on how dark or light I want something to be. And when I have, like just then, I kind of used some of that darker in the trail and brought it back up into that middle ground grasses. And uh, so once again, you're kind of using the, the pastels that are on the paper like your paint palette. And the more you do this, the better you get. Uh, I remember when I was first starting with pastel, I used to be just amazed at the confidence of artists. I'm like, oh my gosh, I would really overthink that and have to slow down. And uh, But start with like little practice pieces before you jump into something serious. Now you can see again how I'm grabbing some of that 
um, color or value from the areas that are darker and I'm using it to kind of get a value study in there. And that's really all this is at this point. It's just a value study and notice how gestural it feels. Uh, that part was a little bit too drippy so I'm, I'm kind of you know reinforcing the darks there. And so um, really that's all it is, is is you get a loose sketch in, get you some value down, and then just play around with the alcohol and use it like you're painting. And here you'll see how I am doing the alcohol wash in stages. So I first got down my value study, my sketch and my value study, and now I'm going to work on what's typically called a complementary underpainting, meaning if you've got a lot of greens and blues and things in your landscape, then you can use the complement or actually the color that's just opposite of the greens and blues on the color wheel, which is warm tones. So I'm using a combination of oranges, yellows, and reds basically as another value study. Now I also knew that I wanted a little hint of warmth in the sky for the final result. I do end up cooling it off a lot more before it's done, but it still has that little somewhat of a glow behind it. So these yellows and oranges are going to help with that. Also too, notice how I'm putting some oranges down. I'm kind of carving into the tree line just a little bit. Uh, I'm later going to do this um, even more as I establish the painting. But now I'm just going to uh, get some alcohol, do an alcohol wash on this. Now I'm using a smaller brush here and I guess I could have used my larger brush but I was trying to be a bit more careful about it not just dripping so much down into the tree line and also too a common question I get is why do you do an underpainting if you cover it all up well first of all I typically don't cover it all up and some of it does kind of peek through now I have seen times I think I've probably done it before that I, I pretty much did cover it all up um, but also usually it does it influences a couple of things it influences our mood and it also influences the color that we put on top of it uh, it really does make a difference rather than just working on the color of the paper in this case just that light creamy surface so I have found over the years that uh, I love doing an underpainting and it you feel more like an artist I think and you're just playing with color and having fun and to me art is about painting is about light and color and so why not have fun with it you know now notice here I am using the red that I'm using in the foreground typically color temperature gets warmer in the foreground and cooler in the background but in this case I was imagining the background field getting illuminated a little bit by the sky and even though I cool it off later and some of the foreground is like a hill that's curving down to the viewer so it's a little bit in shadow so that's why I put a little bit of the cooler reds into uh, the foreground and also you know they're going to be cooler if they're down deeper into the grasses so I'm still doing this alcohol underpainting in stages and I've done this before but I don't think I've I've actually made a video where I um, section things off the way I'm doing now as with the underpainting and I, I like working this way because I have, feel like I have more control I often like to share that some of these initial underpainting stages when you're getting loose the point is to stay loose but you can sort of lose confidence in yourself because you're like oh this just looks like a mess and a lot of artists call this the teenager or the adolescent stage and it's actually a good thing it's loose it's impressionistic it's what you're building upon so we have to resist the urge to get too tight and too detailed too soon this is like the good foundation of a house you know you have to have um, if you want it to have a loose painterly feel you got to have that as the beginning now I am going to speed this up a little bit at 
this point or soon but I wanted to share I've got two darker pastels this one it's it looks like it's black it's not I think it's either a really dark purple or dark green but um, I am reestablishing my darks notice how everything you may have noticed earlier it looked really dark when I applied the alcohol but that's because it was wet now it's dried you see the purple you know it, it's the color that of the pastel but I'm getting this the foreground trees are gonna have the darkest darks and then the trees are going to gradually lighten in value. That's why I'm using that little bit of a lighter value green. Still dark because it's a vertical object. And I'm putting a little bit of that green to create harmony in the darker value trees. Now I'm doing the same thing in this visual trail. I'm reestablishing kind of that dark underground roots and trail for some of these flowers that are going to be on top of it. I often like to try to think of things in painting as working from the ground up. I think that's a really good way to think about things because often we have a tendency to focus too much on the things that are on the surface before building those values in the underground foundation. So once again using some of the same colors there with the dark and the green in that trail it establishes harmony I, I always say if I have a pastel in my hand I try to incorporate it um, it's kind of like practical you've already got it in your hand why not use it in other places uh, but it also creates a connectivity and a harmony throughout your painting now I'm using a little purple I know that there's going to be some cooler areas once again that hill kind of rolls towards us so it's a little cooler it's further away from the Sun and uh, now that is one of the blues that I am going to be using for these flowers. They have this electric blue feel. I got a lot of great responses and um, feedback, I guess you could say, from when I shared the painting. And I think it had to do with the way I use this blue. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. So this is still, I think this is real time here still. Um, but I know that field back there, it's going to have some of the blue flowers going back into the distance. And I did, once again, want to cool it off a little bit. It was a little warm with that underpainting. I do add some greens on top of it. Um, and I'm still playing with the values and the trees. But just so you know, in that back field, I'm going to have a stream carving through it. My client wanted a, she shared with me a lot of my previous paintings that she loved. And one of the things she loved was one painting that I had with these bright, purplish blue flowers in the foreground and she also uh, likes paintings that have little streams carving through them so I was a little bit in a quandary because you don't want to have too many focal points in your painting but I thought you know what I think I can very subtly create a stream in the background that won't compete with the flowers in the foreground so that was my goal now I'm using a piece of pipe foam insulation if you've watched my videos much I use this a lot I got this technique I don't know if this is where she got it but the first time I heard it was from artist Karen Margulis and um, it's really one of the best uh, little tools you can use for blending and I don't always use it but when you want to create some mood or soften things up a, a little bit more of an impressionistic feel uh, it's a good strategy now you notice I'm using it like I do you know how I mentioned with the paintbrush using it when I was doing the alcohol underwash or underpainting I use it almost like a paintbrush here I'm using directional strokes notice how I turn it and sometimes I use it uh, right right here I use it more energetically and then as I get to the background I use it a bit more precisely and now I have my underpainting ready and I will start applying the color that I imagine for the final painting this is the stage where I mentioned I would cool off the sky and the neat thing about pastels is that they start to blend themselves that's one of the things I remember early on is that I had a propensity to blend things too quickly or want to make them look finished too quickly and with pastels and I think with many other mediums we learn as we paint and get more experience that the stages embrace these stages just let them happen naturally don't force them don't try to finish too soon or get too much detail too soon and often I mention this quite a bit when I'm painting I have the advantage of looking back while I'm uh, videotaping these and I get to see 
how much I liked things when they were a bit unfinished. So, um, so don't get stressed if uh, things look a little uh, unfinished at first and just let it be and just gradually work the whole painting. That's another recommendation I have is work the overall painting. Don't get too crazy in one area. That's definitely something that I've gotten better at over time. Now, I'm using the pipe foam insulation again. Notice how the sky is starting to cool off. Notice how it's not so intense with that orange and that yellow, but it's still got a little bit of that glow beneath it or behind it. And it's going to start to feel like it's a, you know, the sun is setting, but there's still a coolness to the sky. And also, too, I, I brought a little bit of that color over as sky holes behind the trees. But keep in mind that things get darker with sky holes in the background. You don't want to keep them too light or they look artificial. Now, I am lightening some of these background trees. Remember how I said you can put down some darker values at first and you can lighten them. The beauty of pastels is we can layer things. So now I'm giving the illusion that things are further away with uh, lighter values, but I'm making sure my greens that I'm using aren't too warm. Temperatures get cooler in the distance. Now I'm going ahead and since I have that cooler green in my hand, I know the grasses behind these trees that are in the foreground, they're going to be cooler. They're in the shadow. They're further away from the sun. And so I wouldn't want to put a really warm yellowy green there. And so I'm just gradually working this painting um, keep in, keeping in mind all of the little rules I've learned over the years that if you're a novice or brand new at this, that you'll learn if you keep at it. Um, sadly, there's no shortcut to this, okay? And I've found that you've just got to keep practicing. The biggest gift you can have is determination <laughs> and a will to persevere. And if you do, you will gradually just get better as an artist. But I always encourage you, have fun during the journey. I, I probably was way more frustrated early on than I should have been. So I always try to encourage people, just enjoy it. You know, it's not going to look perfect at first. And here's where I'm adding that concept of a stream. So I'm using a little bit of a teal. I've got some of those teals in the sky. And I know I'm going to have some reflections in that water, but notice I didn't get crazy about having to get the water in just so. Now I'm going to keep this real time for a bit. Notice I'm not speeding this part up, but towards the end, I will speed it up a bit. And um, the painting actually didn't take much more than maybe an hour and a half. And I really enjoyed this process. I do have a bit of my classical music playing in the background, so I hope YouTube doesn't have a problem with that. But I'm going to add a little bit of uh, music on top of it right here. I don't think it'll make a problem, but that way you'll be able to still hear a little bit of the scratchy sounds of the pastel on top of the UART paper. I love those sounds. So enjoy the rest of this. I'll be back at the end. Stay tuned. Make sure if you haven't subscribed, you subscribe to this channel. You like this video, you comment, and um, we have a lot of fun here. If you haven't become a patron of mine and you'd like to, it supports this channel. It really helps me to keep these free videos coming. And there's a lot of people who really rely on free resources that are all over the world. They don't have any other option. So I love to be able to offer these things to people all over the world. So it's $5 a month to become a patron. You also get extra instruction. You become part of a great community of some awesome artists uh, of all levels. Lots of beginners um, that are my patrons. So, all right, guys, enjoy the music. And I'll be back for some commentary on the blue flowers, the electric blue flowers that I know everybody loved in this painting. So hang in there. I'll be back soon.
here's where I begin adding the concept of these flowers. Now, I'm not sure of the name of these flowers. They're just the ones that have these tall um, buds that kind of stretch out long, and they're usually very vibrant blue and purple. And I love the lyrical feel that they had. Um, like I said, I did mostly this from a concept in my mind, but I did use some blue flowers as a reference. And uh, notice how I'm adding a darker version of the same uh, mark making, you know, and I'm not taking every flower and reproducing it like I see it. I'm using the suggestion of the flower. You know how in real estate they say location, location, location. With painting, it's suggestion, suggestion, suggestion. That's just something I've come up with myself to remember that I don't have to spell everything out. I can suggest things and learn the rules of how nature has a beautiful spontaneity. And I think we can learn a lot from just observing nature and seeing how there is an order to things. But there's a spontaneous beauty as well. I often think of just how the wind blows things in a disarray, but beautiful perfection at the same time. And now I'm going to show you a little close-up. Now, notice how vibrant this blue looks. This is just a Sennelier blue pastel. I wish I remembered the number of it. But it looks so vibrant, I think, because here's where I did miss some footage here. I apologize. Um, but I think it looks so vibrant because I purposely didn't let it be overworked. Notice how the rest of the painting has sort of a soft feel. It's very um, blended by its own layering. You know, I haven't done towards the end a lot of blending other than the initial stages of the pipe foam insulation. I'm letting now the pastels blend themselves. The sky, I wanted very soft. I didn't want it to compete with the flowers. I definitely wanted those flowers to be the attention grabber, but that stream I felt just pulled the eye back and that warmth in the sky. Can you see now how there is still a bit of that underpainting showing through? So now I'll add the music back again, but watch as I work and I'm just suggesting these flowers. Some of them are a bit more blue, some are a bit more purple. I typically like to put the dark values down first, not always, as in the, the bright blue ones to the right there. Um, but now I'm incorporating some of those teals and other colors in the background to uh, give some interest and um, color harmony. So now I'm going to start working some of the greens, more of the flowers, and at this point I'm having fun. This is probably my favorite stage of a painting, especially when I'm feeling good about where it's headed. Um, also notice too, you see some of that warmth underneath the foreground flowers. You see that underpainting still showing through. So it definitely does influence the overall work. If I had done this painting without any underpainting, it would have been too cool in my opinion. And by the way, I will be recreating this painting in a larger format. I'll probably film the process. I have to apologize. When I get to painting crazy and having fun, sometimes I forget my hair is getting in the way. <laughs> I don't have it tied back very well. So uh, again, enjoy this process. I'll be back at the end and uh, pay attention to how I'm carving out things with the grasses and the flowers. All right, I'll be back.
end here is the final normally I say this painting's available in my Etsy shop but it already sold so I do have prints and other products available of it so thanks for being with me I enjoyed this moment with you and happy painting